Let's review some of the integration rules that you should have learned at the end of Calculus 1. And most of these are based off of observing derivative rules that you're more familiar with, and then just working backwards. So the first one, like with derivatives, we have a power rule for integrals. And it's based off of the power rule for derivatives. So remember, for instance, that with derivatives, if you take the derivative of x to a power, you move the power down in front and then subtract 1. So if we're going to reverse that, if we're going to undo it, we need to do two steps again. We need to add 1 to the power, and we need to divide by that new power. So, for example, the derivative of x to the third would be 3x squared. So if we want to undo that by taking the antiderivative, if we didn't just know that it was x cubed, we would need to reverse the two steps, pulling down the power and subtracting 1. Let's undo them in the opposite direction. Let's add 1 to the power, so x squared becomes x cubed. And then we would divide by that new power, whatever it ends up being. After the addition, the power ends up being 3. So if we divide by that, and of course we have plus c, so the answer is x cubed plus c. So for ones that are not quite so obvious that you don't just have memorized, we can apply the same rule. So for instance, you could say the integral of x to the fifth, and if you like, you can pause and try to write this one down yourself before I write it down. But we can do the same thing. We can add one to the power, which would give us x to the sixth, and then we can divide by that new power once we have it. So that would be 1 sixth x to the sixth plus c. We could do something like the integral of 2x to the seventh. That would give us 2x to the eighth. And then we would divide the 2 by 8. So we could write that as 1 fourth x to the eighth, if you'd like to simplify. Now we don't necessarily have to simplify, but if you'd like to, we can do that. So the basic power rule for integration is very simple. Just like you get used to the one for derivatives, you can get used to the power rule for integrals, and it is pretty smooth. Now, if you remember back to when you learned the power rule for derivatives, there were all sorts of functions that didn't originally look like x to the power of n, but you could write them that way. So for instance, we can take the integral of the square root of x. And again, you might need to pause for a second and make sure that you can do this one on your own. But if not, remember that the square root of x is the same as x to the power of 1 half. And once we have it written that way, we can apply the same power rule to the antiderivative. And we just need to be comfortable working with fractions. But otherwise, it's not too bad. So we would add 1 to the power, which would give us 1 half plus 1, or 3 halves. And then we would divide by 3 halves. Now, rather than writing x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, what you'll often see is that we multiply by 2 thirds. For that, you just need to remember that when you divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And once you get comfortable with that, again, it's fairly straightforward. So our general power rule here, we had the one for derivatives, and then the one for integrals says that the integral of x to the n would be 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1, plus c at the end. A couple more examples. We can have something like 1 over x to the fourth. Again, that doesn't originally look like x to the n. And make sure you don't look at it and just take the x to the fourth and apply the power rule to that because it doesn't fit the same pattern. We need to rewrite it as just the integral of x to a power before we can do anything else. So again, remember that we can write this one as x to the negative 4, and then apply the same rule. Just watch out. Those negative signs can throw you off maybe more often than you might expect. Just uh, if you're careless, it's easy to get tripped up on that. So just be careful. Take it slow, and it'll work out OK. So if you have x to the negative 4 
If you add 1 to that, you'll have x to the negative 3. And then if you divide by that, you'll have negative 1 third out front. So there's your answer for the integral of x to the negative 4, or 1 over x to the fourth. Now don't forget that you have an incredibly powerful tool at your disposal. When you get to the end of one of these questions, when you end up with an answer for your antiderivative, don't forget you can always check your answers by differentiating, which is probably the thing you're more comfortable with at this stage, taking derivatives. So if you need to, take a second, take the derivative, and make sure that you end up with the correct answer. So for instance, I could take the derivative of 1 fourth x to the eighth plus c and make sure that you end up with 2x to the seventh. If you do, then your answer is correct. If not, you made a mistake somewhere. So don't forget that you have that at your disposal. Whenever you would like to check an answer, you can just by taking a derivative. Here's one more. The integral of 1 over the cube root of x squared. This would be a good one to pause and see if you can do on your own before I show you the answer. Because this one involves both of the last two examples. We need to rewrite a radical, the cube root, as a fraction, and we also need to write it as a negative exponent because it's in the denominator. So it's going to be x to the negative. Now also we've got that x squared inside the cube root, which can be tricky, it can throw you off, but if you remember your exponent rules, that takes the x to the one-third, and that squaring it just means that you end up with x to the two-thirds, negative two-thirds in our case. So if you need to take a moment to review your exponent rules, this would be a good time to do it. But if you're comfortable with that, the rest of the problem is pretty straightforward, because you're just applying the same power rule as always x to the negative two-thirds to integrate, we would add one to that power. So negative two-thirds, if you add one to it, again, you need to be comfortable adding fractions, but what you end up with is x to the one-third. And then you need to divide by that new power. So if we're gonna divide by one-third, that means it's the same as multiplying by three. So we have three x to the one-third plus c, of course. So if you can do that one, you can do everything that came before, because that's kind of the trickiest one of that whole list, reviewing the power rule for integrals. Now, how about this example? What if we have a little bit simpler one? What if we just have 1 over x as our function to integrate? What happens if we try to apply the same rule? we start the same way as we did with 1 over x to the fourth, we would write this as x to the negative 1. And then to integrate, we would add 1 to that power, so we would get x to the 0. And then we would divide by 0. And hopefully that sets off all sorts of alarm bells. For dividing by 0, we're running into really big trouble. Can't do that. Okay, so something broke here. And before we go on and talk about the actual answer to this question, I want you to pause for a minute and think about how unique this example is. That one over x itself will break under this rule. But one over x squared, one over x cubed, one over x to the fourth, one over x to the 1.5, one over x to the 1.0001, any one of those would be entirely fine. One over x to anything other than one even if it's 1.00001, would be totally fine. It's just when the power is exactly 1, when it's exactly 1 over x, that you run into this problem. And I just want to mention that to you because we're going to actually see something like this come up again at the end of the semester, which I know you'll forget by then, and that's okay, but at the very end of the semester, we're going to find out that this 1 over x, or if we're doing series at that point, we'll talk about 1 over n, in the same way. And there's something unique about it. It's a very special function in that it kind of straddles the line between uh, two different things. It's, it's uh, very, very close to working without actually working. And that's as much as I can say right now without talking about a lot more stuff. But 
just to mention that 1 over x is kind of an interesting function because it behaves almost like its neighbors, but it has its own quirks, it has its own behavior. So for our purposes here, just remember that the integral of 1 over x, we can't apply this rule. And it's okay if you forget that, because if you try to apply this rule, you'll quickly run into a situation where you're dividing by 0, and that should be enough of a red flag that it stops you uh, right before you get into more trouble. So we'll pick up here and go on from here in the next video.